Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Royalty Talk Tuesday. My name is Portia Basham, and I am the CEO, the visionary, the founder of the Royalty Ladies. And as always, it is indeed an honor and a pleasure to sit and to chat with you about the Word of God. My purpose is to empower you spiritually and personally through the Word of God whilst we enjoy a lovely cup of tea. So grab a friend, let them know that Royalty Talk Tuesday is on. Tell them to get their lovely favorite cup of tea, get their Bibles, their pen and paper, and to meet me here at the Royalty Table. And let's get started with the Royalty Talk Tuesday broadcast. Amen. Father, we give you thanks and we give you all the praise and the glory. This is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Meet us here at the royalty table and teach us as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's pour ourselves a lovely cup of tea this morning as we get started on our topic. This morning, our topic will be maturity in Christ. Hebrews 5.13, Hebrews 5.13 states, for every partaking, I'll just add a little sugar whilst I do that, for every partaking of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he's an infant. In the literal sense of the word, you become a Christian, you get milk. As you grow in Christ, you start to eat meat. You don't want to find yourself with a 13-year-old still in diapers, a 13-year-old still drinking milk. So it's the same thing for the body of Christ. So let's, let's dig, dig, dig into it, okay? Maturity in Christ is achieved through becoming more like Jesus Christ. After salvation, every Christian begins the process of spiritual growth with an intent to become spiritually mature. According to Apostle Paul, and I love Apostle Paul's, you know, concept on leadership and on teaching. Apostle Paul, he says, it's an ongoing process that will never end in this life. In Philippians 3, 12 to 14, speaking of full knowledge of Christ, he tells his readers and his brethren, that he himself has not already obtained all this or have already been made perfect. But I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. That's Paul talking. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Like Paul, we have to press continuously towards deeper knowledge of, Christ, of God in Christ. In the next two or three weeks, we will be chatting about maturity in Christ and how do we know we are mature in Christ. The Bible makes it clear that we can grow in our faith and in the holiness. God tells us we can make steps forward towards him and is always calling us closer and deeper into a relationship with him. In fact, do you know growing closer to the Lord is the most important thing in your life? More important than reaching your dreams or fulfilling your calling. Everything you do in life flows from everything you are in Christ. The way you treat somebody, the way you respond to somebody, the way you treat your family, the way you um, deal with situations. It all comes down to your knowledge of Christ, your maturity in Christ. The Bible clearly distinguishes between those who are spiritually mature an immature. The Bible is full of examples of the immaturity of believers that came to Christ throughout the known world. Paul and other apostles wrote to them in letters that make up 
our New Testament and address some major failures and flaws and struggles. Reading about some of these actually give us hope for our own lives today. We learn a lot from Apostle Paul and his disciples. And yeah. Should I say disciples? Let us take a look at two points today. We're going to look at two points today as to knowing whether or not we are spiritually mature. And next week we'll look at another two. Number one, how do I know I'm spiritually mature? Mature Christians receive the truth of the gospel as it was passed down to them. Mm. Think about that for a minute whilst we take a sip of tea. A faithful follower of Christ doesn't add or take away from the word of God. You're not the message. I'm not the message. T.D. Jakes is not the message. You play no part in the message. You are simply the messenger delivering the word that declares the message about Christ and his ways. The Apostle Paul goes so far to say, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. You will find that in Galatians 1.8. Paul is literally saying that even if he himself strays from the pure message about Christ and his teaching, stop listening to him. Clearly, he desired to pass on the message of Christ in all its purity because this is where the power is. How do you know you are spiritually mature? Number one, mature Christians receive the truth of the gospel as it was passed down to them. Number two, mature Christians stop pointing out everyone else's sin, everyone else's faults, and start confessing their own. I could attest to that. I, I have to still learn that. <laughs> the Lord is still working on me. <laughs> Was it um, D.L. Moody that said, um, I've had more trouble with myself than any other man I've ever met? Jesus taught us, do not judge others. And I know that's hard to do. Do not judge others you will not be judged. You will be treated as you treat others. Do you believe that? You will be treated as you treat others. So if you want somebody to treat you right, you treat them right. You want somebody to treat you with respect, you treat them with respect. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. A mature Christian comes to this place where they finally see their own glaring scene and continually focus on repenting in their own lives and stop trying to be watchdogs over the world. They understand the weaknesses of their own flesh. Mature Christians are much more gracious judges of others because these words or those words of Jesus have hit their hearts really hard. So they do not wish to be the same again. How do you know you are a mature Christian? Don't judge people. How do you know you're a mature Christian? Don't change the word of God. You know, our God has been great to us. He wakes us up in the morning. He talks to us every day. He directs our path. He gave us guiding angels. He gave us his word to direct us, to teach us how to and what not to do. He's an awesome God. He is a God all by himself. In order to be a mature Christian, you need to know the word, study the word, listen, listen to those who teach the word. You know, I don't like to close my broadcast without encouraging those who haven't given their life to Christ. The word of God says in Romans 9, 10, that if you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you say it with your mouth, you shall be saved. So why don't you say the sinner's prayer with me? For those who are backslidden or for those who do not know the Lord. Dear God, I know you are the only way to salvation and to heaven. 
and I give my heart to you. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I want to make Jesus Lord my Savior today and forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And just like that, your sins are forgiven. Just like that, you are part of the beloved. You know, ladies and gentlemen, don't take God's word lightly. God's not a God that he should lie. He's not a God that he should repent. If you'd like to know more about the Royalty Ladies and the upcoming events, especially for our community group and our upcoming conference, please visit us on Royalty Talk to sorry, on Royalty Ladies, and that's T-E-A, ladies.com. Or you could like us on Facebook, it's Royalty Ladies Society. Instagram, Royalty Ladies. Twitter, Royalty Ladies. But as anything else, it's always a pleasure to sit and to chat with you and to spend my Tuesday morning with you. I'll see you next week, Tuesday, same time, 8.30, for us to continue our talk on the maturity in Christ. As I always like to say, friendship, tea, and fellowship. It's a fabulous combination. You be blessed and have a blessed week. See you next time.